Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. In this video, we're gonna cover the number one problem that most anglers have on going out and just catching fish. And that's all about finding spots. As we know, it's 90% it's of fish live in about 10% of the water. So it is our duty as anglers to know how to identify that 10% of the area that is gonna have most of the fish. And it doesn't take rocket science to do it. The good thing is, is I'll share with you some tips that you can really shortcut your way to finding fish on most trips. All right, so given the importance of that, I'm gonna give you a couple tips. And not only that, I'm gonna show you on a drone this exact spot that we're in. That is a really, really good spot. And it's a good spot because it maximizes structure. That is the, the overall lesson is just maximize the amount of structure that you're targeting in a specific area. You're gonna maximize your results. Because in this area in particular, we have right here behind us a, an oyster bar that is on a, a good grass flat that has some depth changes. Also, we have another island, just another cast on this side with a, with a big grass flat on the other side. That's, that is multiple types of structure in one general area. So no matter if the fish are, are preferring an oyster bar at this point in time, or an island, or a grass flat, or a little bit deeper water, we have everything right here. So this is a spot that regardless of exactly what the fish are honing in on, like what the exact trend is, we're gonna be able to catch fish in most cases because we have just such a variety of different of different structures, of different targets for this one spot. So let me go ahead and I'll give you an aerial view of exactly what this, this looks like from a bird's eye view. And then on top of that, we're gonna go into an online map so that I can show you how to use free online maps to find exact areas like this without even having to leave the convenience of your own home. So here's some drone footage of that exact spot. And I just wanted to, first of all, before we go into the maps, is really wanted to focus on the importance of structure. And as I said before, it's all about maximizing structure. Let me go ahead and, and pause this video and, and I'll, uh, I'll just kind of dissect this spot and then we're gonna transition to a free online map where it is shocking how much valuable information can be, can be gained from it. Structure is so, so important because, you know, most popular fish, most popular inshore fish like redfish, you know, sea trout, flounder, snook, you know, they're all ambush predators. And so they use structure and, and these various types of structure for two reasons. Uh, number one it is really protection from themselves. Like even, even seagrass areas like this, this dark area, it's all seagrass. You know, even seagrass can be a, a way where they can, they can hide in there and they're less likely to be seen by their predators like, like humans or a dolphin or sharks. And so they, they use, you know, they use that structure. Same with the oyster bars, right? Dolphin, uh, they don't want to get up there and, and damage their, their skin on the shallow oyster bars. And so redfish, snook, trout, they've all learned that. And so a lot of those will gravitate towards oyster bars for protection. And so the, the second benefit of structure to these fish is, is that it helps them feed. You know, they, they use that structure as ambush points. Um, for example, you know, they'll, they'll use potholes like this white section in the seagrass, that's a sandy, a sandy area. It's a little bit deeper than the, than the grass. So oftentimes they'll sit right on the edge of these potholes because they're at a lower profile. So that way a little shrimp or a little bait fish that's swimming right along the top of the seagrass, they have no idea that the bigger predator is, is right around the corner until it's too late. And so again, fish over the years, you know, they've learned, you know, what types of, of areas, what types of positions are best for you know for themselves and, and so they utilize that you'll see a lot of commonalities of of where these different fish are are positioned and every day is a little bit different so it's not always you know they're not always going to be on the potholes they're not always going to be on the oyster bars they're not always going to be you know near the mangroves um, but the most often be in at least one of those and typically when you when you determine the trend when you're able to find out the trend is that trend is going to keep working for the remainder of the day, at least the remainder of the, of the tide cycle. So I really like to utilize spots like this that have a variety of different structures all within like one cast in either direction. And as you'll see, once I start playing this video again, is I actually do hook a snook and, uh, and you can see it thrashing around this area here in a little bit. But what I was doing is I was casting up in this shallow, you can see this shallow pothole, which is right next to the oysters. And then I was just retrieving it back. And so in one cast, I was able to determine if the fish were going to be in the, in the pothole, right up in the shallow pothole, or if they're going to be over the seagrass, which is this darker, this darker region is, is just seagrass. And then you can see a couple potholes. 
and it uh, turns out that snook was holding right on the edge right as you can see that it gets a little bit deeper and that's where it was holding and sure enough i we ended up catching a couple more fish and they were all right along the edge just like the first one so i'm gonna go ahead and play it and it should happen pretty soon again you'll see that uh, that fish thrashing here in a second but uh, again it's just so so powerful is just to always consider the types and amounts of structure for the area that you're fishing and when you do have success there you can see it start thrashing right there you know, when you do have success is is just take note of that take note of exactly where it was and then see if you can repeat that and if you catch you know two or three or four fish then you know you're on the trend and that is typically going to be the recipe for at least the next the next couple of hours and just for a quick example of the types of things that I like to look for is I like to see oyster bars and I love to see oyster bars that are on grass flats. So you can see we have, we can have, we have both. And then also on the seagrass, you know, in this darker section, love, love, love to see potholes. You can see a really big one here. You can see some nice ones up on the backside of the, uh, of the oyster bar, some nice potholes up there. Uh, but then also, you know, for deeper water, right? If a big front comes through a lot of times, the fish will, will pull back into the deeper water. So here, you know, this is probably about four or five feet of, uh, of water, um, which is much more shallow than right here, right? This oyster bar is totally out of the water. So again, you can have a, a big difference in, in depths plus structure all in one spot. This is like the textbook uh, of, all, of all spots that are going to most likely produce throughout the entire year because it just has so many different type of holding points where they might not always be on all of them, but in most cases, in most of the seasons, they'll be in at least one of them. So now you're probably thinking, okay, well, fantastic. I understand, you know, need to, need to look for structure, but, you know, hey, you had a drone out there. That, that really, uh, that was what helped you, you know, see this bird's eye level view. And, and that's not the case at all. It is shocking how much just incredibly helpful information is out on the internet completely free of charge. And uh, so here's, here's an exact example. So here is the drone footage. Again, this is the real life drone footage. And let me pull this screen away and you can see what is free of charge on Google. So this is the exact same spot. It's just rotated a little bit. So here is the oyster bar. Uh, and then here is that island that I was next to. And so the boat was anchored, you know, right here. We had the, uh, the power pull down. So we were sitting right here and this actually, this footage actually shows a better representation of the bottom contours than the actual than the actual drone does you can see you can see it, it is just a crystal clear image you know from from the you know the free google map uh, than it is on on the actual drone so if, if you're targeting snook redfish sea trout really any species that is often found in shallow water that's actually that's clear or at least mostly clear these online maps are just incredibly helpful where you can actually not only see the above the water um, you know stuff which is which is extremely helpful but also the underwater the underwater footage is just incredibly helpful because you not only can you see you know underwater structure like grass you can see the the depth contours based on the just the coloration right you can see this aqua means that it's deeper and again here it gets a, a shallow point with grass and some really nice good potholes and then a really deep channel right here. You can see again, just the the actual, uh, the, the green, you know, the amount of green and blue is, uh, is more pronounced than it is in this hole so that we know that this hole is gonna be the, the deepest area. This, this channel is deeper than this hole. So the, the great thing about these online maps is that again, you can just see so much information just so easily and, and without having to pay a penny. The bad thing is that sometimes the maps were taken during times where, you know, where the water wasn't clear or there's a, a bad glare on the surface of the water. And so it's important to know a couple different map services. So the first one is Google and, uh, and we'll just do Tampa, Florida. So I just did just a quick search for Tampa, Florida and Google. And then it, and I see this screen. All you have to do is just click on the map and then that'll pull up an actual street view. And from here, you can zoom in, zoom out. I often like to take this little ad section out of there. But if you look down in this bottom corner, or the bottom left corner, you can see satellite. So there you just click satellite, and here is the satellite imagery of all of Tampa, right? And, and we can sit there and scroll around. Here's a very popular area, Weedon Island. 
Um, and you can literally scroll down and see, you know, see the seagrass, right? Because then you can go off to deeper water, a lot of good potholes, then the mangroves, and you can literally see everything. It is just so, so important and helpful to get this bird's eye view without having to physically take a drone, you know, a drone out to any specific spot. So again, down Fort DeSoto Park, if I want to see how the channels, the channels go through the flats, you know, where the deep, the deeper areas are, where the, the shallower areas are, uh, again, this is just so, so helpful. You can see there's some really deep, really deep cutouts here in, uh, and back in this bay, which will probably be a good wintertime uh, retreat. So uh, again, I, I know that without having to bother flying a drone, I literally just get get online and, uh, and check it out. So another map service I highly recommend is, uh, is Bing, bing.com. And so Bing is very similar to, uh, to Google where I just went to bing.com. I searched for Naples, Florida, and then here, is the, uh, here are the results. And so we can just literally just click on the map view just as we did in Google. And uh, it, it defaults to road, but we can switch to aerial. And now we have the satellite imagery. Right. And so here is an example. You can see some clouds. Right. So sometimes these satellites have, you know, have clouds or have, you know, some sort of, uh, of either reflection or something in the water. It's all, you know, it's all that's the importance of knowing, you know, different maps. And, uh, and sometimes being is the absolute best. Uh, sometimes, like in this case, we can't see much for that area. But if you if you zoom in on this, uh, this little section here, you can still see some really good details where you can see the bars, how they interact with whatever bay this is. You can see this little small little channel up in this bay. So again, even in times where it's not a crystal clear picture, it can still be very, very helpful. And as we go down further down towards, you know, the, the 10,000 islands, you can see it starts to get to get pretty hazy. And so that is where, again, having multiple maps is very helpful. We'll go over to MapQuest. And once we're on MapQuest, if you look over here on the right navigation, there's a little globe, and that's for the satellite view. So literally, just click that that globe, and then we can just just zoom in and uh, and zoom in to whatever whatever area we're interested in. If we wanted to look at the Tampa area that we were checking out earlier, let's look at Fort DeSoto. You can see that's uh, not quite as good as it was with Google as far as clarity, but it's still it's still pretty good. Now we're going to go down to the uh, the Marco area and uh, and see you know the Naples Marco and see how it does there. So you can see this is very very this is very crisp, much better than than being. And so again, that's just the importance of of being able to to easily navigate from one you know one system to the other. And uh, with with MapQuest is pretty cool as you just saw there. Uh, based on the zoom, you have pictures that are taking during different times. So let me zoom out, uh, and there's there's actually a pretty crisp picture that's overlaid with a bad one. Um, this one is all a nice crisp picture, but as I zoom in, I can start to see pictures that were taken at different times. So we'll, uh, we'll get in a little bit closer to this little cut here. So again, uh, pretty cool with MapQuest is that you can actually see the same spot with different pictures without having to go from one map to the other. All you have to do is, uh, is change the zoom. So if you're interested in getting better at, at using these online maps, we have an entire course for our Insider Fishing Club members where we show exactly how to use these maps, you know, how to identify, you know, oyster bar versus uh, versus sand patch, um, how to use, you know, how to use these maps in areas that have murky water. There's some tactics that you can do to get the most information possible from there. It'll really cover all the details that we just simply don't have enough time. To, uh, to cover in this video. So if you are interested in that, check out our Insider Fishing Club. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time and watching this video. Hope you can get out on the water soon and catch some big ones. Hey there, it's Joe Simons, one of the other co-founders here at Salt Strong. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you want more videos just like this, every single week delivered right to your inbox all year long. And, and if you want to take your game up to a whole new level and just become a more consistent inshore fisherman, being able to predict where the feeding fish will be all year long and, and avoiding the dead zones, then I highly encourage you to apply to join us in the Insider Fishing Club. Now, a quick warning, it is by application process only, and we only accept a fraction of the people that apply to get in there. But if you think you're fit, 
if you're coachable, if you want to have more fun, if you're a positive person who really wants to join a like-minded community that gets you and where everyone's helping out each other and to join a community that's just basically focused on the trends and helping you understand the biology of these fish, you can just go out there and have more fun and catch more fish than you ever imagined, then click down below now, see if you're a fit. Otherwise, if you have questions, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. We're not like a normal corporation that just sits behind a, you know, our desk and never talks to people. We would literally love to hear from you. Fish at saltstrong.com is the best email or toll free 855-888-6494. That's toll free 855-888-6494. 6494, where you actually get a real live person who's on our team, not someone who's over in India, some other country. So any questions, let us know. Otherwise, click down below now and join us in the club. Can't wait to see you in there and can't wait to see some amazing fish picks from you and just hear about the transformation in your fishing game. Click down below now.